With the Dobundis and the Brelvis, uh, I think that's the last ones that we've got to cover on this. Um, they've got just a couple, they've got about three issues between them. That's three issues. Right? And you know what? I'll be honest with you, I've sat with both groups and I can see a clear path in the middle, middle path where both of them can get on together. But yet, either, both of them, it's just polemics. One is pulling this way, one is pulling that way, one says this side, one says... And I can see both of them have got a, an, a point of agreement. For example, the Deobandis claim that the, Suf, uh, that the Brelvis say, the Deobandis claim that the Brelvis say, that Prophet had every part of the knowledge of the unseen just like Allah. They claim that. I have talked directly to Imams of the Brelvi sect and I have not found an Imam to this date who believes in that. Big Imams. I've been to Hajj two years ago with a group. I don't know how I ended up there, but with a group of <laughs> 300 Brelvis. You know? well, I must say, we started with, uh, you know, started seeing so many dirty eyes, this and that, but then in the end we became friends. Seriously. Now why? Because, alhamdulillah, I praise Allah, He has given me a good heart. I went up to the Imams and I told you know, you've got to basically, you've got to be good to people. You can't just expect people just to be good to you. You've got to go out your way to be good to people. And then talk to them nicely and see what they say. I asked that Imam, a big one of the big, I won't take the name because then he might get in trouble. <laughs> right? But no, he won't get in trouble because he actually said to me, you know, he said to me, I might as well mention the, the Imam's name. He's a great Imam. You know the, you know the um, Albert Road Mosque? Parking? Yes. Albert Road Mosque. Yeah? There's, there's, a, there's a mosque there with a wedding hall in front of it, and there's a Hindu temple there. You know, you know that place I'm talking about? The Imam of that. Yeah? Imam Jamshed. He's a great, great guy. And he's clearly from the Brelvi, and I'm from the Deobandi. And I sat with him in Medina, and I said, Monana said to him, tell me about this, what do you believe? And he said, we believe that whatever Allah gave to the Prophet ﷺ in terms of the knowledge of the unseen, he had that much only. Greater or less, whatever Allah gave him, that's how much he had. And I believe the same thing, and the Deobandis and the Brelvis believe the same thing. This thing has been taken out of context because there's been certain Brelvis, very few. You can show me literature of three, four people in their literature. And you know, certain Deobandis that have basically tried to slaughter each other in the literature. And one said he believes that, the other one said, yes, I do believe that. You cannot label a group, a whole massive, you know, hundred thousand or you know, millions of people that are following that. You can't label them just because of a few individuals. Okay, you've got to be careful, you know, you know in, in doing that. So he said that, and, and you know what he said to me further? I said to him, Imam, you know, we talked also about the Noor. There's a big issue about the Noor. Was the Prophet ﷺ's Noor, was he created from Noor and what Noor was that and so on and so forth. Yeah? Be very clear about it. He said to me on the dinner table in Medina, he said, the Dobandi, there's not a single Dobandi that will not accept Molana Thanwi's writings. Yes or no? Allama Thanwi, Sheikh Thanwi, Molana Thanwi, whatever you want to call him. Yeah? He was one of the greatest scholars of the Dobandi legacy. He said in his book, Nashru Tib Fi Dhikri Al Habib, this is about the book in the praise of the Prophet, which Mulana Thanwi he, he wrote himself. And I've read the book from cover to cover. Now, this Imam is saying to me, saying, in that book, the first hadith that the Imam quotes, and the few hadith he quotes, is about the nur of the Prophet. Yes, there is a difference of opinion whether you say that that nur is actually the nur of Allah. And I'm telling you the Brelvis don't believe in that. Go to the Imams. Go and ask them, are you trying to say that a, that a part of God cut off from him, from his light, and he basically made Muhammad from that? Are you trying to say a part of him is missing and that is Muhammad? Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. Same way, on their side, there's people saying that the Dawbandis don't read, read their sunnats after their fadd prayers. You're laughing, yeah? They believe in that. I'm serious about that. And you know what? They never come to this masjid and the people of this masjid never go to that masjid. That is the biggest problem. You know, I had, I had a friend up in the Midlands one day, he thought to himself, you know what? He's had enough. He's going to walk across the road to the other masjid. <laughs> Literally, I'm not joking. There's 
one door here and one door just there. That's maybe less than this much of these two walls, right? And these, I used to go to the salahs every day. These guys go this way, we go that way. We come back out, we say, Salaam alaikum. We walk together all the way. He goes home, I go home. Then come back out, and he goes that way, you go this way. Never in their lives, never in my life, I dared step in that much. My dad would have. You know, and my community would have said, Astaghfirullah, he went to that masjid. And the same on the other side. One day he walked in the masjid, in our masjid. And to his surprise, the Imam did the salam, everyone got up and started reading the sunnahs. He said, No. <laughs> and he went back to the other side. He went to his Imam and he said, Imam, you know what? I went across to the other masjid and I. He said, Astaghfirullah, Janab. <laughs> Basically, that's what they say to you that you know you became you know and there are some look there are some imams on our side as well there's imams that are really you know they, 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 they really need some training right so that imam said to him so what are you talking about they never read the sunnah he said look i went there i saw it with my own eyes he said no what you're talking about is not right on our side we've got the same thing we've got imams they went the imams who are all their lives talking about them they've never gone and sat with them and discussed these issues I have, alhamdulillah. And any Brelvi Imam I will meet, I will go and discuss it with them. With a good heart. And that Imam said to me, Imam Jim Shay said to me in Medina, he said, I said to him, I said, Imam, why don't we make a forum? Or well, let's not call it a big party, well, let's just get together. I'll stand up from my side. You stand up for you, Musa. Let's get together and let's bring these two communities together. He said, I am saying labbaik to you. I said, okay. He said to me, you know, he said, my youngsters in my masjid will be the first to say yes to this. And it's just unfortunate, once after my hajj, I went to the masjid and he was, he was out. So I was going to actually talk to him about the issue. But inshallah, I will go again. It's just taking out the time and going there, finding him and so on. Uh, is the issue. But inshallah, I will go again. And inshallah, if in my lifetime Allah can do this, then I will do that. Do you know what? Inshallah. Mufti Rafi Usmani, who is a very great friend, Mufti Taqi's older brother. He is in this position. In his Juma khutbas, in Darun Karachi, He's a Dawbandi. In his Juma Khutbas, he has Dawbandis, Brelvis, Salafis, Ikhwanis, and um, you know, the Ahl Hadith that come. They all come in his Khutbas. You know why? Because he's a neutral Imam. And that's what Imam's supposed to be. He hasn't given up his Dawbandism. He's a Dawbandi. He's a Hanafi. Like me, I'm a Dawbandi. I'm a Hanafi. There's nothing wrong with that. But I can get on with people because I've got a heart to give space to believers. In my heart, if I've, got, if I've got a serious difference of opinion with you, I'll just tell you. If it's not from the Quran Sunnah, I'll tell you exactly what I believe from the Quran Sunnah. I'll show you black and white. <coughs> if you don't agree with you, fine. I still will pray for you. I will love you as a Muslim brother. I'm not going to give you up. Unless you disagree with me with such a matter that there's no scope of me accepting that. That's when I can't do anything about it. That's when I will have to depart from you. But that's very rare. That's rare that that will happen. So these are the issues. Ilmul Ghaib. The Nur and did the Prophet had a, have a shadow or not? And the birthday of the Prophet. Big issue. The birthday of the Prophet. 12th of Rabiul Awal. You know, whoever comes out or whoever doesn't come out, that's it. Is their Iman gone or, gone or come? I'm telling you clearly that in, you look into the Dawbandi, the certain Dawbandi ulama who have accepted the other side and certain Brailvi ulama who have not accepted this side. That's how Allah leave it. I'm not going to go into the issue of who's right and who's wrong on this. All I will say is this, all I was with my open wide heart I will say this, I've never gone out and marched on the 12th of Rabiul Awal to praise the Prophet's birthday, but I've never condemned the people who come out. You know why? Because a lot of the people who come out, they come out and their only attachment to the deen is this. A lot of these brothers, I feel sorry for them, they only have five attachments to the deen. 15th of Shaban, 27th of Ramadan, Eid number one, Eid number two, and the fifth one is Eid Milad al-Nabi, the Prophet's birthday. They've got five attachments. You start telling the guy, listen mate, there's no 15th of Shaban, it's bidah. So you've got ding, he's only got four left, four connections to deen. You say, brother, you know what? 27th of Ramadan, yeah, it could be Laylatul Qadr, but you know what? It could be any one of the other nine nights, which is true. Uh, is it worth for me gambling 10%? Nah, it's alright, don't come. Ding! Free left. Say, don't come on the, you know, Sahabas never celebrated this, that, that, you know, Milad and you start giving him all that thing, and then he'll stop that. He's got the two Eids. All you're going to see this brother doing is he'll come to eat prayer with his cool hairstyle. You know what I'm saying, like, brother? 
he come in, he in the back row, he no do no wuzu baba. <laughs> he just stand there, he want to see his mates. And when they come out, they gotta pump the music outside. <laughs> the guy no 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 dean. He don't understand nothing. He only know how to basically. <sighs> That's what you're gonna do to the brother. The more you release, because you've got to give him an alternative. You've got to give an alternative. If you don't replace these things with another thing, then he's just going to be lost. And a lot of brothers like this, they come out with, I know one thing I like about them, is that they've got a love, lot of love of the Prophet ﷺ. And there's a hadith in Bukhari, subhanAllah. There's a hadith in Bukhari, a man, he started to, he was drinking. You know, drinking was allowed in early Islam. So he used to drink and he used to drink, and he got caught out in the early Islam. In the early Islam, if you got caught drinking, it was basically, first Prophet ﷺ said, say, just, just say bad things, just say foul things to make him, make him feel sorry, be sorry for himself. So they did that. After a while, the Prophet said, you know, take your shoes off and beat him with the shoes, your sandals. Just beat him with the sandals. Yeah? After a while, then he got more serious and more serious and more serious. Right? But in those days when he was, you know, he got caught a few times. And the Prophet said, say this to him. And he got caught again. The Prophet said, say this to him. And he got caught again. The Prophet said, take your sandals off and beat him up. And then somebody came and he said, Masha of Allah, what should we do to that guy? The Prophet said, you know, the love he has for Allah and his messenger is a lot of love that he has. He has a lot of love for Allah and his messenger in his heart. And Prophet ﷺ praised him for that love. Sahih al-Bukhari. You've got to look at the good of Muslims, you know, when these things basically come about. You've got to look at, you know, a positive way of trying to bring another Sahabi, just the last one until I take a Q&A, right? Another Sahabi, he came, Messenger of Allah, he said, he said, Messenger of Allah, give me permission to drink. Prophet didn't, you know, Sahabu were angry. The Prophet said, Do you pray? He said, Yes. Do you speak the truth? He said, Yes. He said, Okay. These are early days of Islam. Please don't take this as a fatwa to go and start drinking. <laughs> Thanks to Hassan Ali. <laughs> These are the early days. Later, it's completely prohibited, right? So Prophet in the early days said to him, You know, okay, come, come to the masjid. So he, the guy used to come to the masjid. And he used to bring his bottle up to the masjid door. And he used to put it at the bottle, at the masjid door. And then he used to come inside. He used to pray, then he used to go out. After a while, the person felt guilty. Then he started to leave his bottle at home. Then after a while, he felt more guilty. Then he smashed his bottles. Or he gave up his, you know, rum of wine, whatever he had. And then he became like the rest of the Muslims. You know, there's hikmah, there's ways of, you've got to look at each person differently and see how you're going to call to them. You can't just say, Aqi, Haram, hairstyle haram, jeans haram, this haram, that haram, you haram. <laughs> Whichever I will, you can't do that. Brothers come to the deen, you know, he wants to, you can't just say, you know, don't listen, don't do this, don't do that. You give that much, right? The guy's just going to turn away from the deen. You've got to take it easy. On some people, you've got to take it easy. All right, anyway, Jazakumullah khair. Now, the Q&A, please.